Thanks for joining us online at Concordia in Lakewood, Colorado. If you have any questions, want to find out more about us, or if you want to check out our past sermon series, we invite you to go to our website at clcgrace.org. Our current sermon series is Myths We Believe, and our title for today is I Could Never Forgive That Person. Again, if you want to catch up on our series, go to our website under the Messages tab, click on that, and you'll find everything there. May God bless your day. All right, so here we are. We're in our series. Uh, we're continuing our series on myths we believe. If you've missed any of these, uh, you can just go to our website, clcgrace.org, and you can catch up uh, where we are in our series. Uh, but today's myth that we're looking at is, I could never forgive that person. I could never forgive that person. Um, my guess is, in fact, it's not really a guess, we've all dealt with this myth on some level. Each of us. It doesn't matter how old you are, we've all dealt with this myth on some level. Maybe it, was, uh, maybe it was as simple as this, that we heard about something, or we saw something, or we read something about something that happened to somebody else. Not us, not a loved one, but somebody else, and we've kind of put ourselves in their place, and we've wondered. Well, I wonder if I could forgive that person, right? If that had happened, I wonder if I could, because I, you know, I don't think I could forgive that person, right? We've all probably put ourselves in that, in that scenario. Um, so that's one level. The next level, of course, is when something happens to us or a loved one and, and we, we think or we say, well, I, I could never forgive that person, right? That, that heat of the moment. You're, you're just kind of caught up in it and you say, I, I, I could never forgive that person. Um, but then, you know, kind of once the dust, the dust settles and things begin to clear out, calm our heads, fail, then we say, oh, yes, I forgive. And we move on. I, my guess is a lot of us have been there. But maybe... Maybe this next level you're at right now, and that next level is this. Maybe you've said it, and you meant it, and you still mean it, right? I could never forgive that person, either for what happened to you or for what happened to maybe a loved one in your life, right? Maybe you or a loved one was abused or raped. Maybe your spouse walked out, and now you're left with just the pieces. Maybe, maybe somebody you trusted betrayed you. Maybe your father beat your mother. Maybe your mom, she just walked out on you and your family. Or maybe the person you can't forgive is yourself. There, there's, a, there's a bunch of scenarios. I'm sure you have your own scenario, or maybe one of those. I could never forgive that person. And like I said, it's one thing to think in the theoretical, right? Well, if this had happened to me, could I forgive? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a simple mind game, mind exercise. We can work our way through that and decide, oh, yeah, I don't know, whatever. And like I said, there's times that, that things happen where initially, like, our, that response is, oh, I can't forgive. But again, calmer heads, we go, yeah, okay, I can forgive, and we move on. But what happens... What happens when something happens to us or a loved one that we cannot move on from? What happens when something happens to us that we cannot move on from? When, when we have been hurt, wounded, scarred, and that pain is all too real. When something has been done to us or to a loved one, and we can't get past it. What then? What do we do at that point? See, that's the myth we're talking about today. That's the scenario we're talking about today. I could never forgive that person. And the thing about this myth, and this is what I want you to hear, it's a little different than some of the others we'll look at because this myth is sometimes a truth. And here's what, I mean, here's what I mean by that. Go back with me to Matthew 18. Right? You, can, you can get back there and, and you can read. I'll tell you the, the story. Remember, we have the, the master, and he, he, uh, this one servant owes him. And understand what Jesus is trying to tell us here. First part, he's trying to let us know, trying to get us to understand that, that this debt that the servant owes is a stupid amount. Right? It's a crazy amount. Um, so for us, let's say it's $10 million. Okay, 
That's preposterous. There's no way this servant's going to pay back $10 million. It's just a stupid amount of money. That's what he owes his master. We don't know how he gets this far in debt, but here he is. $10 million. And he owes his master that. And the master does what? He erases that. He wipes it off the books. Right? He doesn't put a... He doesn't set up a payment plan. He doesn't say, wow, that's a lot of money, so I'll tell you what, over the next 50 years, once a week, pay me this much until you're done. He doesn't make it manageable. He erases the debt. He totally wipes it out. Could you imagine that? You owe somebody $10 million, and he wipes it out like that. So the servant leaves, and Jesus says, so now he runs into another servant. And again, you got to get what Jesus is doing here. He's trying to get us to see the absurdity in this. He says this guy owes him, it's a pittance. It's nothing. You could probably blow your nose and it could come out. That's how little it is. It's like five bucks, right? And the servant comes up to him. He says, you owe me five dollars. Give it to me. He goes, I I don't have it right now, but I will pay you back. He goes, forget it. I'm going to throw you in jail until you can pay me back. Does that sound pretty close to where we are? So now pick up with me. Um, go to Matthew 18 and go with me now to verse 30. How does verse 30 start out? But he refused. Right? The, the second servant comes to him, the guy who owes him five bucks, and he says, I, Yeah, I owe you five bucks, I'll pay it to you. And he says, He refuses to forgive the debt. He refuses to forgive the debt. You know what that is? You know what that's saying there? That's a hardening of the heart. That is a hard heart. He's not saying I'm struggling with this. He's like, oh boy, I don't... I refuse to forgive you. I refuse to forgive this debt. This is where we are. This is what we're talking about today. This refusal. I could never forgive this person. If that's where you and I are. That's correct English, wasn't it? Thank you. If that's where we are today, I could never forgive that person. If that's our mindset, if that's our heart's direction, then this myth of I could never forgive that person, guess what? It becomes truth. If that is our heart and our mind's direction, our mind's made up, I refuse to forgive, that myth becomes now our reality. And guess what? At the other end of that spectrum, if that's our reality that we refuse to forgive then the other reality plays out that we will not experience what? God's forgiveness and God's grace. Go back to Matthew 18. Look how Jesus finishes, finishes out this parable. Then the master called the servant in. He said, you wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay the debt he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. Now, this just this isn't a one-off saying from Jesus. This isn't the first time he brings this up. If you have your Bible open still, go with me to Matthew 6. And the disciples, right? Hey, you know, how do we pray? And Jesus goes through all this stuff. So here we are in Matthew 6. And he says, Our Father in heaven, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. You know the next part, right? And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then Jesus goes on. He doesn't leave it there. He says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. It doesn't get much plainer, does it? That's pretty clear, right? If we don't forgive, we don't experience God's forgiveness and grace in our own lives. This myth, I could never forgive that person. If that's our mindset and if that's our heart's direction, that becomes our truth. And that turns into a very deadly truth. But it doesn't have to be our truth. And that's the good news today. That doesn't have to be our truth. 
because I could never forgive that person can actually be a myth in our lives. But here's the thing. It's not by my power, and it's not by your power. This power is not within us to forgive. It is not within my ability to forgive, nor yours. This, this strength to forgive, the power to forgive, has to come from, from outside of us. It has to come from a different source. It has to come from the source of, uh, of all grace and love. It has to come from the source and the fountain of all forgiveness. It has to come from the one who hung on the cross for your sins and for my sins and who cried out, Father, forgive them. This is the only way that you and I can even hope to begin to forgive other people is relying on the strength and the power and the grace of Jesus Christ in our own lives. Go back to, to Acts 6. Think, what, think what's happening in this story. You have Stephen, right? Stephen, a Jew. He's with his fellow, he's with his fellow Jews, right? He has come to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He's been converted. He now wants his people to know Salvation. He wants them to know who Jesus is. He wants them to spend an eternity with Jesus Christ and be immersed in his love. And so he shares this with them. And what's their response? Kill him. That's their response, to kill him. And so they pick up rocks and they begin to throw the rocks throw the rocks at him to crush the life out of him. Throw by throw, blow by blow, they crush the life out of Stephen. And all he wants to do is bring salvation to him. And they continue to throw the rocks until he dies. But before he dies, he says this, Lord, don't hold it against him. Lord, forgive him. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? That that's his response. Lord, forgive them. What could possibly give somebody the ability to forgive under those circumstances? We read the words on the page, put it into real life scenario. How are you going to cry out, Lord, forgive these people? It's not within my power. It's not within Stephen's power. It's not within your power. It's not within our power or ability to forgive anything. To forgive the rape, the molestation, the, the murder, the neglect, the betrayal, the lies, whatever. You and I don't have that power. Only Jesus Christ has that power. Only Jesus has the power to forgive. And it's only immersing ourselves in that grace and that forgiveness that he has for us. It's only in enveloping ourselves, wrapping ourselves, embracing the truth for ourselves that Jesus has forgiven every evil in our lives. Let me repeat that. Every evil in our lives that Jesus has forgiven, it's only by embracing that truth and reality for ourselves that we can begin to offer forgiveness to other people. But it's not within our power. It's only Jesus. And I gotta tell you, Jesus wants to set you and I free from the burden and the myth, the lie that says, I could never forgive that person. That is the lie that Satan wants you to live with. That's the, that's the lie that Satan wants to burden you with, that you cannot forgive. Jesus wants to free you from that. Because he knows that's the only way you will ever be free is if you learn, if I learn to forgive. And he knows it's not easy. Jesus knows, above anybody else, Jesus knows forgiveness is not easy. But he knows that's the only way for us to be set free. He knows that's really the only way for us to truly experience God's grace in our own life. I could never forgive that person is a, is a, is a myth. It's a lie. But the only way it becomes a lie is if we turn it over to Jesus. It's only by his power and his grace and forgiveness in our own lives that I can begin to forgive somebody else. And I get it. People will say to me, well, how can you stand up there and tell somebody else how to feel? Whatever, I'm not telling you how to feel. I'm not going to tell you how to feel. I don't know the abuses, the hurts, the wrongs that happened in your life. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, what my job is, what your job is as a Christian, is to proclaim the truth that Jesus Christ has forgiven every single evil in my life. Every sin he's forgiven in my life, and he's forgiven every sin in your life too. He holds nothing against you. That $10 million, $10 billion debt that you owe, he's wiped it off the books. 
And because he's done that, by his amazing grace and power, he wants to work that in our lives. And he gets it's not easy. The cross shows us it's not easy. But he said, I want you to be free. I want you to be free. I want you to have life. When we forgive others as Jesus has forgiven us, we will see God. And guess what? When we forgive others as Jesus has forgiven us, the world will see God through us. It's not easy, but Jesus knows that's the only way for us to experience life and true freedom. Don't believe the lie. The truth is, by the grace of Jesus Christ, we can forgive. And that's probably enough for today. <laughs>